major research interests are I study dinosaurs and I, I want to get as much information out of these beautiful extinct animals as we possibly can. And so I'm fighting against a whole bunch of doctrine that says proteins can't persist. So we've tried to develop multiple methods, not just the standard ones, but many different kinds of methods to support the idea that original organic molecules, including proteins, are preserved in some of these bones. Well, I think um, a lot of it is developing new methods because, for example, you guys who have a lot of proteins, you can extract many different ways and still get a signal. But we have to make the most of a tiny little piece of fossil because they're often very rare. In addition, the molecules that are there are modified in ways that are not predictable by current databases. So that's where the use of antibodies and other material comes in, is figuring out what antibodies to allow in these modifications and how they happen. So in addition to studying the molecules and the histology and the texture and the structure of bone, we also study the environments they're preserved in. So we can get an idea of how the, how the geochemical environment affects the proteins. There's a lot of um, influences on proteins or other molecules that might allow them to persist in bone, but those are still not really well worked out. And so the other thing we have is um, co-eluding material in a fossil bone that you don't have in modern bone that might cause ion suppression or reduce the ability for us to recover proteins. And in addition, it's really hard when you're doing a database search to find anything to match a dinosaur with. So those are some of the, just the physical problems that we have. And then there's the problem of acceptance in, in the disciplines. People who work on archaeology, archaeological proteins, and in any further back, they recommend methods that you guys don't use, like pyrolysis GCMS, which is not good for proteins, and it doesn't yield any information. And so when we submit a paper, it's like, well, why didn't you use this method? And so we're fighting a lot on a lot of different fronts to get this stuff accepted. I don't feel that they can persist in fossils. I have data. There's a big difference there. So my philosophy is if you treat a fossil bone like we treat modern bones, if you want to study the proteome of bone, what do you do first? You dissolve away the mineral and then you do the extractions. We do the same thing. The conventional wisdom has always been that with dinosaurs and very old fossils, even in mammals, it, all the organics are degraded away. And so when you dissolve the mineral away, you have nothing left. But that's not what we see. And if we have things that look like blood vessels, things that look like osteocytes, things that look like collagen, they're, they're there. You know, we're not making it up. And if they're there, we ought to be able to analyze their content. So the rest of it is just figuring out these things like co eluding factors or things that interfere with our standard ability to get at that information. Lots more precautions are needed when you're working with very old fossils because there's a risk for contamination. So in our labs, we have a completely separate, isolated facility for fossils. No modern tissues are ever allowed in there. So we have a double set of every analytical instrument. All our pipettes are kept separate, glassware. It's all dedicated in the ancient lab. When we do our modern controls, they're done four doors down in another sealed room. So these things don't, um, don't ever interact. There's no crossover. Um, and the other thing that we do, in addition to standard controls, we do a lot of backup studies, as I mentioned earlier. So if we have these fossil tissues, and we think there are proteins in them, and we can get sequences out by mass spectrometry, we can then take specific antibodies and apply them to those tissues and show localization. There's no crossover. They're there or they're not there. And um, the other thing that we do that you guys probably don't do is we sample the burial environment and we sample all of our um, buffers that we use in treatment all the way through. And we run them on the mass spec as well so that we can say, you know, we've got collagen sequences or hemoglobin sequences that are coming out of these tissues. 
but they're not in the sedimentary environment in which these guys were interred for 60 million years or more. So they must be coming from the bone. We also do a lot of microscopy at different levels, different levels of integrity, I guess, yeah. so that we can tell um, that, you know, if it looks like a blood vessel, then we put it under the SEM. And if it still looks like a blood vessel, then we put it under the TEM. And then finally we do immunogold labeling on TEM so we can see these at a very fine structure level. So we have a lot of different methods that you guys probably don't apply. Think outside the box. Don't let anybody tell you what can't be done. Figure it out for yourself and don't quit after the first 10 or 15 failures. It takes a long time if you're going to do something nobody's ever done before. But it's so important because right now we're leaving an entire data set unanalyzed because of the preconceived notion they're not there. So I would just say, don't believe what everybody tells you and figure it out for yourself. Thank you.